This is the sixth Sunday of Easter. We are post-resurrection. Christ is risen still, indeed. Yet have you noticed the gospel readings we have used from the lectionary in our sermon series precede the crucifixion, which may make you ask, how did you all come up with a sermon series entitled, What Now? Life After Resurrection, when the readings come from before the resurrection? And that would be a valid question. This is why. What was happening in the lives of Jesus' followers before the crucifixion is often what is happening in our lives now, even way after the resurrection. Take today's reading. At this point in the gospel, Jesus has washed his disciples' feet and told Peter that Peter would deny him. Now Jesus is in his discourse, what we call his final discourse. Only they, of course, did not know that. Jesus did, but they didn't. Jesus was preparing them for his departure. In the verse that just preceded the passage we read, one of the disciples has asked Jesus a question that Jesus does not address in his response. It is though Jesus is on a track, that Jesus has a one-track mind, and he knows what he wants to say, he knows what he wants them to hear. It is though he knows they will soon ask, what now? And for him, addressing that question is more important than addressing the question that was asked. Part of this passage was read in this place on Tuesday afternoon as we gathered to celebrate the life of Bill Hawkins. Part of this passage is often read at funerals because there are times we need to hear its words. Times of loss. Times of confusion. Times of anxiety. Surely, this is why Jesus said these words to his disciples that evening before they actually needed them. Surely, that is why the Gospel writer John recounts them 60, 80 years later for the early Christians to whom he writes who were living in a time of confusion over what was real. Surely, that is why we use them over and over. We need to hear Jesus say, Peace I give you. Not the kind of peace the world gives because the world really doesn't. The kind of peace that comes from the presence of God. Here is the thing. Peace doesn't come about because circumstances necessarily change or improve. Jesus doesn't say that. Peace comes about because we recognize God is with us. Whatever the circumstances. Maybe you don't need to hear these words today. Maybe the sun is shining so brightly in your life that all you want to do is bask in it. And hallelujah for seasons like that. But we all know circumstances change. We experience loss confusion, anxiety. Two Sundays ago, Ann Hawkins did not know she would need those words 
two days later, assuring words Doug read at Bill's funeral. Maybe it is not loss, but anxiety that surrounds you or you don't know is around the corner. Is it just me or does it seem like anxiety is just in the air these days? I want to share with you a time I felt the presence of the Holy Spirit in the midst of high anxiety. In telling you this story, I will have goosebumps because I do every time I recall a particular meeting in Holston Conference, a meeting of the extended cabinet with the conference lay leaders. Bishop Swanson was leading the meeting but had to leave to catch a flight and handed the reins to the conference lay leader who I did not envy that day. When the bishop left and Mary Ruth took over, some of the male district superintendents started ramping up their posture and their voices. Tension became palpable. I was confused and frankly almost frightened How would this resolve? Would it resolve? I experienced anxiety, even loss. The one who was in control was gone. My confidence in this group of leaders was waning fast. What now? Interestingly, these brash men began to glance over at one of their colleagues, a woman, diminutive compared to them. They would bark and they would glance her way. She would say nothing. I was puzzled by what I was witnessing and what I was feeling. They would bark out at the group, and they would glance her way. What now? It was as though at last time stood still. And then she spoke. She didn't bark. She exuded quiet, solid assurance. I cannot recall the words she finally said, but out of this diminutive woman, Carol Wilson, came forth the Holy Spirit. Intention dissipated, just as palpable as the tension had been, now was the presence of God. We could move on. And that is what Jesus said. Two verses after today's passage ends, Jesus says to his friends, come now. Let us leave. Another version says, Rise. Let us be on our way. It is as though Jesus says, God is with us. Peace be with us. And they headed out toward the Garden of Gethsemane. The circumstances for Jesus were about to become dreadfully unthinkable. The circumstances for the disciples were about to become confounding. Yet, Jesus knew God was with him. And Jesus wanted his friends to know God was with them and always would be. And Jesus wants us to know 
the very same thing. No matter what the circumstances, because God is with us, we can have peace. What now? Peace. Peace that is beyond our understanding or explaining. Peace that isn't like anything the world can provide. Peace that isn't like God's presence. Peace that is God's presence. I share this story to close. There was once a king who offered a prize to the artist who would paint the best picture of peace. Many artists tried. The king looked at all the pictures, but there were only two he really liked, and he had to choose between them. One picture was of a calm lake. The lake was a perfect mirror for Peaceful, towering mountains were all around it. Overhead was a blue sky and white, puffy clouds. All who saw this picture thought that it was a perfect picture of peace. The other picture had mountains too, but they were rugged and bare. Above was an angry sky from which rain fell and lightning flashed. Down the side of the mountain tumbled a foaming waterfall. This did not look peaceful at all. But when the king looked, he saw behind the waterfall a tiny bush growing in a crack in the rock. In the bush, a mother bird had built her nest. There, in the midst of the rush of angry water, sat the mother bird on her nest. Perfect peace. Which picture do you think won the prize? The king chose the second picture because, he explained, peace does not mean to be in a place where there is no noise, trouble, or hard work. Peace means to be in the midst of all those things and to still be calm in your heart. That is the real meaning of peace. What now? Peace. God is with us. And in his name we pray. Amen.